Hello everybody, this is HG Shapes here. I'm back with another video. Hope everybody's doing well and a happy Christmas Eve to everybody if you're uh, celebrating. So as you probably saw from the intro, today I'll be talking about um, Eleven Shavings Barbershop and um, the story about how I got to review this today is I was thinking back a few weeks ago about during the Lava Games back in June. Um, the very first day I used a sample from Eleven I believe it was the clary sage and violet and the soap performance really st stood out to me as being one of the best that i use that entire month you know i use a different soap each day in june and that was really one of the best ones and so a couple weeks ago i reached out to the owner of 11 uh, paolo and asked him some questions and he very uh, kindly and generously offered to send me a uh, sample um, of his newest scent and soap base in the barbershop. So um, let me read to you a little bit about the scent notes and the soap base itself um, because perhaps um, their base is not something that many of you are familiar with. Um, so the old soap base, which is what all their other soaps have been in, um, was the 11.0 base, which is very fitting given the title, right? And so for this soap, he decided to um, up, update the base a bit. And so he calls this base the Julian base. And the only difference between the old base and this base is that he added cocoa butter to the list of ingredients. And then he also said that he changed the um, quantities, uh, the proportions of the other ingredients. So just to read off some of the notable ingredients uh, in his soap, um, it's a towel-based soap. It has shea butter, cocoa butter, mango butter, triple butters there. It's got some grapeseed oil, uh, silk, um, did I say apricot kernel oil? So, um, not a super long list of ingredients, but definitely some good things in there. And you can tell that it's a, you know, high, high quality soap. There was some thought put into it. For the scent, it's a kind of a classic barbershop scent, and I agree it is familiar to me in some capacity. I'm not sure what it reminds me of, but it's been a while since I've smelled a barbershop like this. And the notes are bergamot, rosemary, oak moss, patchouli, sandalwood, and powdery musk. Um, so that's uh, sort of the basic uh, info about this soap and um, the things that uh, Paula put into it. So what I'm gonna do, well, well, I'm going to show you what it looks like first. That might be good. Um, I've got it smushed into uh, my loading bowl here. It's a very soft soap. Um, not super soft, but it's soft on the side of the, you know, crope spectrum. So you don't really have to worry about getting it evenly spread out in your bowl. If you're going to do like what I'm doing, it'll pick up into your brush, uh, no problem. So um, I'm going to get right into uh, loading and lathering the soap. So I'm going to wet my face with my brush through and I'm using a synthetic brush today and I'll bring you back in in just a second. All right, we're back. And so I've uh, wet the brush through, shook, shook out most of the water, and now we're just gonna get to uh, loading the soap here. So earlier in the week, I did use a uh, high density badger brush for, sorry about the clinging, a high density badger, badger brush for a couple days. And I had absolutely no issues working with the soap. Um, easy, just in every way it was easy. Um, and then for the last couple days, I've been using synthetic. So the one thing I've noticed with the synthetic is because it doesn't hold as much water as that badger, um, I've been feeling the need to just sprinkle a little bit of water into the soap as I load um, to kind of get it to be at a similar, how should we say, loading consistency to what I had been kind of creating with the badger earlier um, in the week. But um, yeah, the scent strength on this is probably medium. I'd say five out of 10 or something. And um, yeah, really as described, it is familiar to me in some sort of way. I've been to a barbershop before where it kind of smelled like this. It's definitely very powdery. Um, and I like that description of powdery musk. Um, usually I hear about those as being kind of separate things, but now I can't see how they're kind of related um you know musk is like kind of a how should we say kind of a 
a dank scent, right? And powder is sort of a sweet one that you wouldn't necessarily call as, like, you wouldn't call it offensive. But um, I do know what he means by that. Um, you, can quite, you, you can kind of smell both at the same time. You can smell the powder kind of as a sweeter top note, and then the musk is kind of a mid note, base note. I don't remember, I'm not really sure. So definitely working with the synthetic, um, for some reason, again, maybe it's just because of the water in the brush. It hasn't gotten as kind of um, puffy in the bowl when I load with the synthetic, but it's no issue. Um, it'll still work into a good face lather. Um, so what were the things that stood out to me about the older base, the 11.0 base, and why did I want to, you know, try out the newest thing from them? Um, well, certainly the ease of use. Um, I felt like this was a incredibly easy soap to use and that, um, it gave you a really good lather though, you know, so it kind of had the best of both worlds and that it was easy to work with, but not like, you know, a bad performer or something, right? Um, so I'm just going to continue to kind of add some water here as we go. Um, this iteration, the Julian base, um, it does feel a little bit less high structure puffy to me than the original one. Um, if you go and you look back at my video from June, the first um, the first shave of the Lather Games 2020, and, and you see the kind of lather I got with um, the older base, it was like I was using cello or something. There was so much, um, you know, structure to it, which is not normally the way I um, make ladders. I, I like it pretty thin and slick, right? Um, and I should say too, that it does appear that Paolo is clearing, uh, sorry, clearancing his um, previous base soaps on his site to kind of make way so they can make all the, all the sense in the new base. So it's a terrific opportunity to try out any of his um, scents in the older base, you know. Um, I think the older base stuff is on clearance for like maybe $11 at the time of this recording for the soaps, that is. Um, and I know that this new barbershop soap, which obviously is not on clearance, um, I know that this one... I think it's $16 for the tub, which is more than reasonable nowadays for a high quality artisan soap like this. So I'm gonna keep working in the lather and I'll bring you back in when I'm about to uh, start my first pass. As you all can see, terrific creamy lather took Really no special effort or planning or anything like that. Forgot a spot. <laughs> um, and uh, now we're getting into the shave here using the Rockwell 6S on the two plate because I'm just shaving off one day's of growth. And I've got a feather blade in there, which uh, I'll talk to you more about that as I go. Um, I think I'm gonna trim the sideburns a little bit today. So certainly the sickness of the soap is um, impressive, good, excellent, whatever word you'd like to use. And let's see if I put enough water into this. I'm putting a little, yeah. I think I did actually. Um, putting a little water to see if um, the slickness increases when you add water to it, which is can sometimes tell you that you needed to put more water into your lather, but I didn't notice that. And let's see if I can get these lined up. Looks like we got a ambulance coming by. 
Um, so for the for the Razer, just talk about something else. Why not? Um, continuing to test out the sharp blade, meaning feather. Um, mild razor theory. I did the same combo with the 34C. So using a Mercury 34C with a feather. And I found that to be a very nice um, razor blade pairing. And then the Rockwell 2 plate certainly a mild one, and uh, I've liked their pairing this week, you know. Um, I think that there is there is a little bit of like unnecessary hype around the feathers, but I do can see that they are very sharp. I mean, I won't argue that point. Um, it's just, they're not as like necessary as people like to make them out to be. But in a mild razor, nice pairing. Okay, nice first pass there. Um, let's uh, rinse and then I'll bring you back in for pass number two. All right, let's load up for pass number two. Okay, we're gonna do our second and final pass against and across the grain with just one day's growth. There's really no need to do more. So here we go. All right, all through. Man, I tell you, that feather, it takes care of business for me. Um, and no no issues with the soap whatsoever. Um, skin feels good, doesn't feel irritated or anything like that. Um, I'm gonna do my uh, final rinse, put on some uh, aftershave, and then I'll uh, give you my final thoughts. Off camera there, just put on a little Zingari balm uh, because I am gonna go out and face the elements today, so to speak. Um, so to close, the 11 Barbershop, new Julian base and new set in this Barbershop. Um, I think it is a great base. It feels, unfortunately, I didn't use the original 11.0 base enough to really tell you how much different it is, like how much better is the updated base. Um, I'm sure it's better because um, Paolo said that it's better and I take his word for it when he says that he put some time into it. Um, but to me, generally, there's there's still more the the two bases are still more similar than different, right? They're very very easy to work with. You can kind of get a high structure thing going on pretty easily, um, but there's still terrific slickness, uh, residual slickness, and no issues in the post shave department, whatever that means. Um, so I am still impressed with the updated base. I'm happy to have been able to try it. The scent is a classic barbershop. If you're into that. I would recommend um, checking this out. It's I, I can't compare it to any other barbershops that I've smelled in the wet shaving genre. Uh, I think this one is different. And if you're looking for one that's a little bit more powdery, musky, again, that's the big note that um, stands out to me. So, um, hope you all enjoyed this video. I um, That's going to do it for today. And before the end of the year, uh, again, be on the lookout for that Best of 2020 giveaway video. I'm looking forward to doing that. So uh, for now, this has been HG Shaves. Thank, also, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all again next time. Thank you. Bye.